um so i think the the first thing to discuss is your initial project plan and then we can have some further discussions as well i'll just share my screen so you can see what i'm uh what i'm looking at okay so So I think one thing to be clear here. Oh, don't know why it's doing that. So these waves, so rogue waves, freak waves, killer waves, they have a specific definition. So it's not just a name given to a rough wave. They have a, a specific definition um, being much larger than the surrounding waves. So obviously when you're not up to speed yet too much with what the uh what the wave parameters are but specifically uh the definition is that it has a height more than double the uh surrounding waves the significant wave height they say um or it has a crest amplitude so just a bit above the surface rather than the trough to the crest that's over i can't remember 1.4 times so there's a specific definition for a freak wave and a rogue wave. Um, I guess this is the Draupner wave, right? Yeah. This, 20, 20, this is talking about the Draupner wave. So that was the very first first one that was detected, the Draupner wave. Um, OK. Well, it's just copy. Say again? So uh, this is just the copy. The, the... This. Yeah. This bit, yeah. But this bit, no. This bit you wrote, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So I think you probably want some more a clearer aim and, and set of objectives here. Yeah. Um. Because at the moment, you know, you've got some basic things to think about. So linear, understand wave theory read some papers around the issue of wave current interaction, particularly around uh, rogue waves, and then you're going to use the model. So, I mean, this is broadly what you're going to do. But I think at this point, you want to have a pretty clear aim and specific objectives, how you're going to reach that aim. So, um, yeah, your aim might be to understand the role of horizontally shared currents on rogue wave formation. And a lot of your objectives might be to, you know, uh understand linear wave theory uh conduct a literature review on the mechanisms for rogue wave generation specifically focusing on those with spatially varying currents uh and then it will be start simulating basic basic wave current cases with this code and then moving towards um moving towards more realistic scenarios and I guess then you've got to try and find what your outputs are. So how are you actually going to understand the role, right? So what are we going to do to analyze the outputs of the model in order to really understand what's going on? So we need some metrics. So we need to define some metrics to quantify what rogue waves are in our data, yeah. where the model that we'll be using doesn't really give us that information very easily. So we need to that is, is one of the objectives really is to try and understand how to relate the outputs of the wave ray theory code which is what we're going to use to an understanding of the statistics of real ocean waves so i think trying to be able to you know step through some basic cases of you know jets and other shared currents we can make um and then be able to understand the outputs enough to be able to say how we think this will affect real ocean conditions and where those conditions apply, I think would be uh, yeah really a key thing as, as sort of the main uh, output once we have the once we have some results. So I think that's what you should be thinking about in terms of the next. Um, you know, we have this we have this submission on the sixth of November, I think, yeah. which is the one that's worth five percent. Um, to make sure that's really clear, we have really clear aims, really specific objectives that clearly meet that aim. That's the main thing I'd say was uh, was missing. Um, you obviously have a yeah, you have an initial go at the um, at the Gantt chart. 
Uh, so I'll just share my screen again. You have initial goals again, chart. Uh, so you've got some, yeah, learn linear wave theory. Basically, what you yeah. Um, yeah, get used to the code, do some simple cases. Yeah, so you have this, you kind of have this here, right? You've got this idea to, we need to figure out a relationship between the rows and the Python results, yeah. Um, so those are probably the main, the main actual areas, but you probably have a bit more specifics within that, right? So um, what do we actually need to do with the code? Uh, sim how do we simulate the simple cases? What do we actually base those on? What do we need to modify in the code? So once we start to look at the code, hopefully that will become a bit more obvious what we need to do. So, you know, uh, some of some of these specific things are around defining the input current fields, the underlying current fields, um, <clears throat> and defining the wave current combination. So what's a realistic range of current speed to wave conditions? So we want to make sure that we're covering a realistic range of those parameters along with the water depth. So we have effectively the wave height, the wave period, the wave angle, the water depth, the current profile, and the so the, the shape of the profile and also the velocity, the peak velocity would be our main parameters. So we need to decide what how we're going to explore that space when we have a few parameters of interest. Um and then maybe how we make that more realistic as well. So yeah, I think overall, you know, th th these are the these are the main sort of steps that we actually need to do. Yeah. Um, what is it that you actually want to cover in your literature review? Because there's lots of things you could cover, and there's lots of things you could get uh, really bogged down by as well. So we need to make sure that's um, yeah, you get a, you get a good understanding of waves and wave current interaction, but we also specifically focus on these horizontally shared currents as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so have you um, have you started to do any reading at the moment? I'm trying to learn the linear wave theory. Okay, good. I'm using your slide, but it's very difficult. So, can you... so what, what I would say is you don't need to understand the derivation. Oh. You don't need to know how to derive the theory. You only need to have an understanding of what these parameters are how how we actually use them to simulate things like the the kinematics of the wave so we have this idea of this velocity potential um that is a, a useful concept um and how we actually use that to derive our expressions for the kinematics and our how we model the surface elevations um what you're not going to need to do in this project is really under, be able to derive any of the theories or the wave current interaction. I would like you to understand basic wave current interaction. So at the end of the slides, there's the basic wave current interaction in terms of I have a wave on, on a current relative and how the parameters on the current relative to the fixed reference frame are related. And then there's some other things I'd like you to understand around like what happens when a wave propagates onto a current? But is, there's no shear. So you just say, OK, there's a wave. What are the parameters without the current? What are the parameters with the current? So how does the height, how did the height change? How did the length change? How did the speed change? Because um, then I think you get an understanding of, of, of broadly what's going on. But we have this additional complexity that the, the waves are like refracting as well. So we have, because they come at angles to the field, they change their angles and their phase and their, uh, and their wavelengths and heights. And then they can interact with its, with themselves, which is when you get these interesting effects. So I think that's the main thing. Try and get an understanding of general wave current interaction, an intuitive sense. You know, if I'm traveling on a current, if, I, if I'm a wave and I suddenly start propagating onto a current that's going in the same direction, I'm going to get stretched out. My height my height's going to reduce, my length is going to increase, and I'm going to move faster with that current. If I, I propagate onto a current that's opposing me, I'm going to get squished up, become much higher, smaller wavelengths, uh, travel much slower, and potentially break. Um, when I propagate onto a, you know, a shared current, I'm going to refract into the current direction. So yeah, just being able to understand the sort of 
principles behind the interaction, I think, will help you understand uh, and interpret the results more easily. Uh, but yeah, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I've been very busy, but I've got, I'll, I'll try and ask a colleague how to get those. Um, but my yeah. I guess my point is you don't need to know everything about this linear wave theory course and be able to do all of the uh, uh, all of the examples. It's good to make sure you understand them, the, some of the basic ones, but a lot of them are not that relevant to what you're doing. Um, so did you, you've got the lecture notes as well, right? Yeah. So what I would say is, yeah, keep work, keep trying to read them and understand them, but bearing in mind, you don't need to understand everything for your project, because we already have the code for solving this. You need to be able to understand what the parameters are and interpret the outputs. Um, but that's and have some understanding of it. But you don't need to be able to drive everything. Um, but yeah, so keep keep working on it. If you have any specific questions, drop me an email. I can email you some thoughts and help you not be confused. Um, because we, yeah, we can have further discussions in addition to the one these meetings every two weeks. Um, I think that's a good idea to make sure we keep an email contact, make sure we're uh, up to speed with each other. Um, but yeah, I'll try and find I'll try and find those um, as well. But yeah, I don't I don't think you need to you don't need to learn hydraulics three. <laughs> okay. Um, just use it to get an understanding of waves, yeah. if you can. Yeah. Um, OK, so have you got an idea for what you're going to do next? You're going to continue focusing on the reading? Mm, then linear waves say first. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. At some point, we're going to have to figure out how to install the Python package. Um, we'll try, try this. Yeah, so we can figure that out as well. I guess that's, they're very different tasks. So if you get bored of linear wave theory, you can start playing with the code. If you get stuck with the code, you can go back to reading. So it's good to have more than one task on the go. So then if you get stuck, you can email me about one thing. You can make some progress on another thing. Um, so yeah, but maybe not straight away. But soon, I think it's good to you know be reading about linear theory, be reading more broadly about wave current interaction and rogue waves. Those are probably your main three areas. Um, and then in parallel, keep playing with the code. Keep trying to get the code going. Keep trying some things out. And and together, we should be able to get a nice project together. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Sounds good, yeah. Any, uh, any other thoughts or questions for me? Mm. No. no. OK, good. Email you later. Yeah, email me later, and uh, you know, closer to the time we can discuss what these specific objectives are going to be yeah. uh, for your for your next submission. That is five percent. Um, and yeah, email me any questions about linear wave theory. I will try and find those videos, but um, yeah, I don't know how to do that at the moment. So let me have a look. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, drop me an email if you if you want to discuss anything further. Yeah, thank and you. we'll have another meeting in two weeks anyway. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Sehan. I'll speak soon. Yeah. Take care. Stay. Yeah, you too. Bye.